Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm going to be talking about nine of my favorite barefoot shoes. So this video is going to be kind of like my overall picks. So these are nine models that I like for different reasons. I tried to include a nice wide range of models that I regularly rotate through. If you need a barefoot shoe for something like training and working out, I have a roundup on that. That is going to be linked up there. I also plan to roll out hyper-specific performance category roundups in the next couple of weeks, so definitely stay tuned if you're interested in that, and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. For context, I buy all the gear I review. None of these picks made it up here because there's some under the table deal going on, but that said, let's get into the content. So if you've subscribed to my channel for a while, you know I like the Tolos Archetype 1.0 and the 2.0. So the 2.0 is obviously making my best barefoot shoe list. It's gonna be my first lead off model, and that's for three key reasons. Number one, I love the versatility of this shoe. This is a model that I can train in, I can lift in, do some cross training in and whatnot, and then also wear casually. I enjoy that because then it's like, if you only wanna spend on one barefoot shoe and not be like me and buy a ton, then you can just get one model to wear for a little bit of everything. So if you need that versatile barefoot shoe, the Tolos Archetype 2.0 can typically be a great option. The second reason why I like this shoe is the outsole typically lasts a while. So with this shoe, you have a little bit more of an aggressive lug structure on the sole. And so with daily wear, if you're wearing this for a high volume on concrete or running in them, typically this shoe will last you a good amount of time especially for the price especially when you compare them to higher premium models that typically tend to fade a little bit faster with their outsole tread so i like the overall durability that you get with this model sole as well the third reason why i like this shoe is if you're like me and if you like going barefoot in your barefoot shoes but then also wearing socks sometimes but you really enjoy barefoot shoes that have like a sock like athletic fit that's where i think the tolos archetype 2.0 can also be a great option these feel very sock like on your foot when it comes to a training context and then also daily wear now two things to keep in mind with this shoe before you buy Number one, it might not be the best option for high volume feet. So in the 2.0, we have a reworked collar and it's much easier to get your foot into this model, I think compared to the 1.0. However, if you have a high instep or a very thick foot, this could definitely be something to consider and you might wanna look into a model that has a bit more of an upper volume to it. The second thing to think about with the shoe is that it's not gonna have the best breathability. The upper of this model doesn't necessarily have the most ventilation. So if you're in hot climates or if you just need the maximal amount of breathability with your barefoot shoes, this model might also be a miss for you. The shoe comes in at $115 and it runs true to size for most foot anatomies. The next model I wanna cover is the Innovate Bear XF. So this is the latest barefoot shoe from Innovate and it has quickly become one of my go-tos. So this model, you can kind of wear it for a little bit of everything, but I kind of put it more into a sporty or athletic workout bias. So three things to like about this shoe. Number one, if you were a fan of the Innovate Bear XF 210v3, but you found that model's toe box to be a little bit snug, I think you'll really enjoy the toe box change of this shoe. It's a little bit more anatomical. It doesn't have as much of an aggressive taper. And so I think it will work for a wider range of foot anatomies. Plus the midfoot in this model isn't super aggressive as well. So despite having a little bit of a taper here, it doesn't feel super off-putting in my opinion. The second reason why I like this shoe is if you want that barefoot shoe for cross training and lifting, and then maybe even some CrossFit, this model can be a great option to look into. The upper has been pretty good for durability purposes. The outsole grips pretty well. So if I'm training on turf, wooden platforms, or rubber gym floors, this model hasn't had any traction issues or at least glaringly noticeable traction issues in my workouts. And then also, I like the level of flexibility that you get with a shoe and the breathability of its upper. This upper feels very sock like on the foot and it breathes super well in hotter gym settings. The third reason why I like this shoe is Innovate included their boomerang footbed. So I personally love this because if you are somebody, for example, who's newer to barefoot shoes and you want something that has maybe a little bit of cushion in it this can be a really great thing because this is going to give you basically more range with this model you're not going to have as harsh of like a ground feel on the shoe as you would with other barefoot shoes without insoles now two things to think about with this model number one I think if you are somebody that likes a little bit more structure to your barefoot shoes uppers that would be something to consider with this shoe it's very lightweight and it doesn't have a ton of structure throughout so if you like a little bit more structure with your barefoot shoes for training I have other options in this video that would scratch that itch. And then the second gripe that I have with the shoe, which is very hyper-specific, is that if, for example, let's say you wear limb shoes and you don't really like some of those models that have kind of like rounded sole, the Innovate can sometimes feel like that. So this sole does have a little bit of rounding around the edges of the shoe. So around the 360 parameter of this model, it does have a bit of a rounding feel to it. So you do notice that, I think, when you're training. Now, is that noticeable in a negative way? Not necessarily. It's more of a preference thing. Now, this model comes 
comes in at $120 and it also fits pretty true to size in my opinion. The next show I want to cover is the Zero Shoes Dylan. So there are a lot of different Zero Shoes that I like, but I wanted to include the Dylan in this roundup because it's honestly one of my favorite go-to barefoot shoes from Zero Shoes when I just want a casual shoe to rock out and about. So three reasons why I like the Dylan is number one, I like the simplistic construction. This is one of the Zero Shoes, in my opinion, that doesn't necessarily have that more dated appearance. I know, I'm sorry, Steven, but like the Harashi design, I'm just not the biggest fan of that. And so the Dylan, I think, delivers a nice, much more tasteful and minimalist design, which is awesome awesome for me because I am much more minimalist with my fashion style. So if I'm wearing shorts or pants, the shoe can be pulled off pretty dang easily doing so. The second reason why I like this model is the mesh upper. It's pretty dang breathable. And so if you are rocking this in hotter climates or if you want a summer shoe that you plan to wear out and about on very hot days, this shoe typically does pretty dang good with breathability. So with or without socks, I have had a pretty good experience with this model regarding my foot climate. So I enjoy the breathability of the shoe's upper. The third reason why I like this model is honestly it's durability has been pretty good thus far. Like I have abused the crap out of these shoes and I think the only part that's really breaking down is back here on the synthetic overlay. I'm having a little bit of scuffing, but overall this shoe has done a pretty good job and I put a lot of miles in these. Like these were my travel shoes last summer when I was in New York City and bouncing all around the country. So this model has done a good job regarding long-term durability. Now, a couple of things to think about with the Dylan. Number one, this heel can be pretty annoying. So when you're breaking this shoe in, I would highly suggest wearing socks because if your foot anatomy, for example, doesn't align perfectly with the shoe, you can have a little bit of rub back here. So I had to go through like a week of blisters in this model, which was very annoying to get them to break in. But obviously once they break in, they feel good, but definitely food for thought there, wear socks and breaking the shoe in. And then the second thing to think about with this model is that if you go with the lighter colorways, they're not super easy to clean. Like I don't love having to clean the shoe every time I wear them. And at this point, like these boys, <laughs> these boys are dirty AF. So. If you're not necessarily stoked on having to clean your shoes all the time because mesh can accrue a lot of dirt really fast if you're wearing them out and about casually, go with the darker colorways, you'll save yourself a little bit of effort there. This model comes in at $100 and they typically fit true to size. However, I would say if you have a wider foot, go up a half size in this model. Maui is back on the channel once again, asking me to tell you to subscribe. It helps put kibble in his bowl, but that said, let's get back to the content. The next show I wanna cover is the Vivo Barefoot Moda Strength. So I like a lot of the Vivo Barefoot models, but I wanted to include a shoe that I wear more often than others, and that is the Moda Strength for me. So this shoe is gonna be much more training biased with its construction. So three reasons why I like the Moda Strength. Number one, if you need a barefoot shoe for any form of cross training, crossfit and lifting, this can be an awesome option to look into. This is typically one of my go-to barefoot shoes if I plan to do any form of crossfit where there's gonna be abrasion on the shoe because this model has been pretty good with durability thus far. You have a nice aggressive outsole wrap here on the lateral and medial side. So when it comes to giving you bite for rope climbs and also just protecting your foot in general with different workouts, this model does a pretty good job. The second reason why I like this shoe is the outsole is a little bit more aggressive compared to some of the other Vivo barefoot shoes. So in the context of lifting, if you want maximal grip, typically this outsole is going to be a little bit more dialed than the other models that are a little bit more flat. These lugs are a little bit more aggressive, so you do get bite a little bit better on different surfaces. So if you're doing sled work or if you're doing any form of deadlifts like a sumo deadlift and you're really pushing the ground apart with your feet, this model should give you a nice level of bite. So that's why I also like this shoe too if you're a power lifter and you want that kind of like more sporty cross training barefoot shoe that you can also compete in. The third reason why I like the Moda Strength is if you like more structure to your barefoot shoes, this can be an awesome option. So this model has a bit more of a structure to its boot, has a bit more structure with the outsole wrapping up as well and really giving you a nice cup feeling when you're training. And then also the upper through the midfoot and forefoot is a little bit heavier. So it does give you a more heavy or bulky or lockdown feeling compared to other barefoot shoes. Now two knocks that I have against the Moda Strength is number one, while I like the more structured feel for certain contexts, this model isn't gonna be the best for true minimalist lovers in my opinion, and it doesn't breathe the best. So if you want more breathability or if you just want your barefoot shoes for training to feel much more sock-like and like breathable and more wispy, this would not be the best option for you. The second knock that I have against the Moda Strength is also its price point. At $200, this is a pretty dang pricey shoe. So I always suggest shopping around for coupons if you could find them before buying this model if you're thinking about it. Now with this shoe, again, the price point comes in at 200. And then when it comes to sizing and fit, this model typically fits true to size for most folks. The next shoe I wanna cover is the Witten Mesh Barefoot Shoe. So when I talk about Witten, we could also include the Knit model as well. They're very similar, but with this shoe, there's a lot to like and a couple of things that I don't necessarily love, but the first thing to like with this model is like, 
These things are pretty dang bomb-proof. I swear, if we get hit with a nuclear war tomorrow, we're all gonna be gone, but you know what's gonna be here? <laughs> these Witten shoes. Like, these shoes tend to last a while, and that's why I kinda like them, because they're a very no-frills shoe, especially for the beginner getting into barefoot shoes. And that brings me into my second thing to like, which is their price point. So, these models have a price point anywhere from like $40 to $60, and so if you are brand new to barefoot shoes, this can be a great no-frills option to look into. They're on Amazon, they're pretty dang cost-efficient, and honestly, they're gonna give you everything that you want with the first barefoot shoe in the context of helping you acclimate and get used to them and just start to feel them out regarding their drop and how you're gonna feel the ground a little bit differently when wearing the style of footwear. The third thing to like with the Witten Barefoot Shoe is they typically have a nice width for most foot anatomies and then also with this shoe, you do have a slightly thicker sole construction. So I also like that they do give you a bit more protection and you also have this removable insole. So that said, the width of this model is pretty fantastic for most foot anatomies and they have a slightly softer ride so if you want a bit more cushion, they can be a really good option to go with. So two cons that I have with Witten shoes is number one, they are an Amazon owned brand. And like, honestly, when I spend money for shoes I review, I would rather support smaller brands, but I do see the benefit of this model as being very consistent, especially for beginners or folks who don't have a ton of money to drop on a $200 mode of strength. I can't fault you for that. So that said, I don't love that they're Amazon owned, but it kind of is what it is and they are pretty dang cheap for what they are. The second knock that I have with the shoe is that if you have a narrower foot width, sometimes the Witten models, because because they have a bit more upper volume and there's just not a lot to their upper construction, they can feel a little bit too wide and you can slide around in them. So food for thought there, if you do have a narrower foot, you might wanna find something that is a little bit more dialed for your foot anatomy. Now, when it comes to this model's price, you can expect to pay anywhere from like 40 to $60, depending on sales and the color you go with, and this model typically fits true to size. However, if you have an exceptionally wide foot, go up a half size in some of the Witten models because they can run a little bit short in my opinion. The next shoe I wanna cover is the Icarus Ascent Gen 2. So this is a much more like daily wear focused shoe. Some folks train in them. I personally don't love it because it is a leather shoe. It runs a little bit hotter. But three things to like about the Ascent Gen 2 is number one, I like the appearance of this model. It has very minimalist branding, which I'm a big fan of. So if you need that barefoot shoe for business casual settings, I like this model, especially if you love leather shoes. On the tongue here, you have some Icarus branding and then back here on the heel, but that's pretty much it. There's no lateral or medial side branding with this model, which I think is a really good thing. The second pro that I have with the shoe is that it comes with three different insoles. So you have a super thin insole, a slightly thicker insole, and then a slightly thicker insole. So I like the variety of the cushion of the insoles that you get with this model because it gives you different ranges of cushion. So if you're brand new to barefoot shoes, or if you just plan to be on your feet all day and you want a little bit more give and cushion with your shoes, that's great because you can slip in that thicker insole with this model. Or if you want to feel the ground more and you're much more of a purist with your feel with your barefoot shoes, but you still want that leather shoe that you can dress up, you can go with the thinner insole. It just gives you more range in different wear contexts, which I am a big fan of. The third thing to like about this model is the full grain leather upper does a pretty good job at like weathering most elements outside and with daily wear. But then also the rubber outsole has done a pretty good job with durability as well. Well. So I think if you need that shoe that you can kind of trust in a bunch of different seasons, this can be a good option. And now that said, two things to think about with this shoe. It is a leather shoe, so it's not gonna have the most breathability. I would say this is the best served as a three season shoe if you're gonna be outside a lot. So for example, spring, fall, and winter. Now, if you're gonna be working in an office, obviously it doesn't really matter. It's a four season shoe for you, but if you plan to wear this shoe a lot outdoors, it's definitely gonna be a better shoe bias towards colder weather. The second thing to think about with the shoe is that it does have a nice width to it. But if you have a narrower foot, anatomy, you might want to look into other leather options. So for example, looking into models from like field grounds could be a better fit for your foot anatomy because with this shoe, it does have a slightly bulkier feel and appearance and I don't want this shoe to look super big on your foot and then kind of throw off its like more casual vibe. Now with this shoe, you can expect to pay around $145 and this model typically fits true to size for most folks. The next shoe I want to cover is the Teardrop Zero Laced version. Now, <laughs> If you are pissed off about this shoe, because it's very similar to the Primus Light Net, I'm sorry, and I totally hear where you're coming from. It does look very similar. But I will say, I do think the shoe is actually a stronger performer, and now hear me out. So three reasons why I like the Drop Zero laced version. Number one, I like the outsole tread a lot for training. I think you get a lot of grip and it's very flexible. So this model is gonna give you a lot of bite on different surfaces. So whether you're cross training and lifting, the shoe has done an exceptional job with giving me grip on different surfaces. The second reason why I like this model is with the upper construction here. You have a booty style construction, yes, similar to the Primus Light knit, but this knit is actually just a little bit less aggressive. So it doesn't poke as much into the top of the foot and it doesn't have as much of a sharp toe break. So this model, I think as a whole, especially when it comes to breaking in, is 
a little bit easier to get behind regarding fitting different foot anatomies and not being very brutal with different discomfort areas that the Primus Light Knit can kind of be plagued with. The third reason why I like this shoe is the breathability of the upper is awesome, but it also has a really nice width to it. So this shoe's toe box is a little bit wider than the Primus Light Knit 2, putting them side by side. And so if you did find that model to be a little bit too snug, or if you just want to hedge your bets, this can be a really good option to look into if you need that shoe for both casual wear and then also training. Now two knocks that I have with this shoe is while I like the upper construction and it's a little bit more casual, if you have a lower profile foot, you might actually find that you're swimming in this shoe a little bit and that could have to do with the width, but then also the upper just not giving you the security that you need. And then the second knock that I have with the shoe, which kind of piggybacks off of that point, is if you like more structure with your barefoot shoes, this is not gonna be your best bet. It's a knit model, so keep that in mind. You're not gonna have a ton of structure through the upper or the boot back here. So for this model, you can expect to pay around $150 and this model fits true to size for most folks. The next barefoot shoe I want to cover is the One Hund Aerolux Barefoot. So this model is similar to the Tolos in that it looks pretty good for casual wear, but then you can also train in it. It's also kind of similar to what I would call like the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light 3 in that performance sector. Now, three things to like about this shoe. Number one, the price point. So at $80, I feel like the price point is really fair for what this shoe has to offer, especially if you want that barefoot shoe for doing a little bit of everything, or if you're brand new to barefoot shoes and you primarily want to get a barefoot shoe for lifting. So for the price, I do like the quality that you get with this shoe. There are a couple of little tiny imperfections, which I call it my written review, but honestly, for that price, I have been very happy with this model. The second thing to like about this shoe is if you want a shoe for lifting primarily with some cross training, that's where the shoe is gonna excel the most. The outsole is super grippy. You have a nice lateral and medial sidewall with the shoe, and the outsole is very flat. So if you like having a very planted feel when you're training and a lot of grip, this can be a really good option to look into. The third reason why I like this model is it doesn't have as much width as other barefoot shoes. So I think if you do have a more medium foot width or even a slightly wider foot or even a narrower foot width, this model will foot your fit anatomy really well and the lower profile construction will likely hug your foot too. So you have a nice level of security on top of a really good fitting shoe for your foot anatomy. Now two cons or two concerns that I have with this shoe is number one, it's not the widest fitting shoe. And that is something that I also talked about with one of my followers recently on Instagram is that he has a wider foot. Vivo Barefoot fit him a little bit better. This model tends to fit a little bit snugger for him. So that said, if you do wear Vivo Barefoot models now and you're looking into the shoe, consider that it might not be the widest model. And if you are kind of on the fence, go up a half size because that will give you a little bit more room and this model doesn't have a paid return. So you are gonna have to pay for return if you want to return the shoe, if you decide to go with them. The second knock that I have against this model is it's not gonna be your best barefoot shoe for running and cross training. So this model can work for some, but because the sidewall isn't super rigid over here and because it is a little bit more flat, it just doesn't feel the most comfortable for like sprints and running and whatnot. So that is where this shoe I do think starts to fall short in the gym regarding very niche performance needs. And then when it comes to price of this model, you can expect to pay $80. And then with this shoe, I think most folks should be safe going true to size. However, if you have a wider foot, size up a half size and play it safe with this model. The final model that I want to discuss is the Origo Everyday Sneaker, and this is the Gen 3 iteration. So three reasons why I like this shoe. Number one, I wanted to include a leather option up here that I wear for casual wear on warmer days. And so I like the Icarus Ascent Gen 2, but again, it's a heavier leather. This model is a little bit more lightweight. It's a little bit more sporty. And in the sense of like more casual wear, I will wear this shoe more with like shorts on a warmer day compared to the Icarus, just because of the differences in the leather weight of these shoes. The second reason why I like this shoe is it has plenty of width through the forefoot and midfoot. So if you don't like a very aggressive taper in your shoes, this can be a really good option to look into, especially if you do want that model for more casual wear. This can be a really good pick to look into. The third reason why I like this shoe is just the minimalist branding. Like if you don't want any branding at all on your barefoot shoes, this can be a great option to go with. The only branding is back here on the boot and you have a pretty no frills outsole here. And so this model does a really good job of being a very minimalist shoe regarding branding and just giving you all the elements that you want for a more durable barefoot shoe. Now, two knocks that I have with this shoe is number one, the boot back here can have a little bit of rub on your feet. I would highly suggest wearing socks when breaking the shoe in. This leather back here can press at times into your Achilles, into your ankle. So keep that in mind when you're breaking the shoe in. And then number two, this leather doesn't have the most premium feel and it does start to crease over time as well. So it is one of those things to think about with the shoe. Like I always expect some creasing, but I know some folks are very particular about the leather in their shoes. And if you don't want any creasing or if you just want something more
more premium, you might want to go with the Icarus Ascend Gen 2 compared to this model. Now with this bottle's price point, you can expect to pay $125, and the shoe typically fits true to size for most folks. All right guys, that wraps up this video covering some of my favorite barefoot shoes in 2024 for different contexts. So I like to rotate my barefoot shoes depending on what I'm doing. I know not everybody is the same, but that's why I like having different options for you to look into if you've been thinking about getting a barefoot shoe for different needs. If you have additional questions on any of the models featured in this video or other models that maybe I didn't include but I have reviewed, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop it on the channel. I'll see you in the next one.